Hey, what going on? It's Mr. Garfield here. And we're going, to look, we're going to be looking at a Cape Integrated Mathematics question, okay, for module three, that is calculus, all right? And we're looking at a stationary points question. All right, so here it says, find and classify the critical points of the function g of x, okay? Now, critical points just means the same thing as stationary points. All right, or turning points. Okay, so let's write our solution here. Now, what do you know about stationary points? Now, you should recall that at a stationary point, it means that the derivative must be equal to zero. Okay, must be equal to zero. So it means that we're going to have to differentiate. Okay. So let us find g prime of x. So the first thing you do is find the derivative of the function. All right. Using the power rule, carry down the power. 3 multiplied by x, decrease the power by 1. So that's 3 minus 1. So that's 2. Okay. Minus, carry down the power, multiplied by the number in front. So that's 6 times 2, which is 12. All right. And then multiplied by x, decrease the power 2 by 1. So you get 1 as the power. Plus, here we have 9x to the power of 1. You carry down the power, multiply it by the 9, so you get 9, and you decrease the power by 1, right? That's 9 times x to the power of 1 minus 1. Now, x to the power of 1 minus 1 is x to the 0. Okay, so, and x to the 0 is 1, so we just have 9 there as the constant. All right? So, you can just remember that whenever you have a number being multiplied by the variable and the power of x is 1, then we know that we're just going to have the constant in front. All right? So g prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Good. So let us now find the stationary point. So we know that the stationary points, so you must have your statements here, which are very important. So stationary points exist when the derivative, that's g prime of x, equals zero, okay? So we can now say that g prime equals zero implies that 3x squared minus 12x plus nine is equal to zero, right? So we're just equating the derivative to zero. Now, if you look at these numbers here, we have 3, we have negative 12, and we have 9. Now, all of those numbers have something in common, right? 3 is a factor for those numbers. So I can just divide each term of the, in the equation by 3. Okay? So when I divide 3x squared by 3, I get x squared. When I divide negative 12x by 3, I get a negative 4x. And when I divide positive 9 by 3, I get a positive 3 is equal to zero divided by three, I will get zero. So you recognize that I have a, a simple quadratic now because the, the coefficient of the, of the x squared term is just one, right? Number in front of x squared here is just one. So it means that when I'm factorizing, I can just write all the factors, right? I don't have to spend any time to split the middle term. So let's just factorize this quadratic here now to the left hand side. So I need my product. That's a times c. So I'm multiplying the number in front of x squared. So that's one. Okay. That's one multiplied by the constant here at the end, which is three. So I get three as my product. And the sum is going to be my b term. That's the number in front of the x term here, which is negative four. All right. So I need two numbers. When I multiply them, I get three. And when I add them, I get negative four. And those numbers are negative three and negative one. Because when I multiply negative three by negative one, I'll get a positive three, that's my product. And when I add, so a negative three plus negative one, I will get my sum, which is negative four. Okay? So I can just write down my factors as x minus three multiplied by x minus one. Okay? Multiplied by x minus 1. 
So x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, and you can only do that whenever the coefficient of the x squared term is 1. So the number in front of x squared is 1. All right, good. So if we have x minus 3 being multiplied by x minus 1 and it is equal to 0, it means two things. Okay. Yes, so if I have x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 1 and it is equal to 0, it means either one of them can be 0, right? So I can say either x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0. OK, so either x minus 3 equals 0 means that x is equal to 3 or x minus 1 equals 0 means that x is equal to 1. OK, good. So either x equals 3 or x equals 1. These are our x values for the stationary points. Now we have to find the corresponding y values. OK, so I'm now going to say when x equals 3, what is, our, what is going to be our y value? So we're now going to substitute x equals 3 back into the original function g of x, all right? So when you substitute into g of x, you get g of 3, all right? So when x equals 3. Now, please do not make the mistake and plug this 3 into the derivative. That is a common error between students, right? So don't do that. So g of 3 is going to be equal to the function was x cubed, so x is 3, so we have 3 cubed minus 6 times x squared, x is 3, so we have 3 squared here, plus 9x, x is 3, okay? Now, if you put all of this into your calculator, you will get a value of 0, all right? That is our corresponding y value, okay? Let us now deal with the x equals 1, all right? So when x is equal to 1, what is our corresponding y value? So we're substituting 1 into the, the function g of x. So we get g of 1, OK? The function was x cubed. So we have 1 cubed minus 6 times x squared. x is 1, so we have 1 squared here, plus 9 times x, x is 1, all right? And if you put this now into your calculator, you will get 4 as the output. All right, so g of 1 equals 4. Good. So we can now write down our stationary points since we have the x values and the corresponding y value. So I can now say that, therefore, the stationary points are, or the critical points, right? You can use that as well. So therefore, the stationary points are when x equals 3, the y value is 0. And when x equals 1, the y value is 4. OK? And those are my stationary points. But I'm not finished yet. Let's look back at the question. It says find the critical points and classify those points as well. All right? So when we're classifying the points, we're basically trying to see if it is a local minimum point or a local maximum point. All right? Now, there are two different ways when classifying the points. Right, you could either use the gradient test or you could use the second derivative test. I'm going to use the second derivative. All right, I'm just going to show you one of those, one of the ways in doing the test. So I'm going to use the second derivative. So it means that I'm going to have to find g double prime. All right, that's the second derivative with respect to x. Okay, so we know that g prime of x is what? Let's look back at it g prime of x is 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. So to get g double prime, I'm going to have to differentiate this derivative again. All right, so when I differentiate g prime, I get g double prime. So when we differentiate 3x squared, we get 6x. And when we differentiate negative 12x, we get a negative 12. OK, that is what we will have. Let's write that down. So g double prime of x is equal to 6x minus 12, all right? So I'm just going to now substitute the x values that we got into this second derivative 
and see whether the value is negative or positive. All right. So I'm just going to say when x equals 3, g double prime of 3 is going to be equal to, so substituting x as 3 into the second derivative, we get 6 multiplied by 3 minus 12. Okay. And we get 6 as the answer. Okay. Now recognize that this value is positive. Okay. 6 is a positive value. So whenever you get a positive value as the output, we can now say that since the second derivative, g double prime of three, all right, since g double prime of three is greater than zero, it implies that three comma zero, all right, that's the stationary point when x equals three, the stationary point three comma zero is a local minimum point. Okay, minimum point. So whenever the value here is positive, it means that at x equals three, you're gonna have a local minimum point, okay? Please do not write the word minimum point only. That is incorrect. You have to write local or relative minimum point, all right? Great, that's it. Now, let us find the classification. Yes, sorry about that. So we're now going to deal with the x equals 1. OK? So I'm now going to say when x equals 1, g double prime of 1 is going to be equal to 6 multiplied by 1. All right, substituting x as 1 into the, the second derivative, we get 6 multiplied by 1 minus 12. OK? And we will get negative 6 as our answer. Now, recognize that this value here is now negative. Right, so when, when the value is negative, we can say what? It is a local maximum, right? So I can now say that since g double prime of one is negative, so it's less than zero, it implies that at the stationary point one comma four, it is a local maximum point, all right? Local maximum point. And you could use the red relative as well instead of local. Okay, so that is our answer. So whenever the value here for the output for the second derivative is negative, it means that we have a local maximum point, all right? And that answers this stationary point question. Okay, I hope that it was helpful. If it was, please ensure to like up the video and subscribe to the channel. I am Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador for the University of Technology Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.